Um, but God has been so good, so, so good. It's past six weeks, and so he has. I don't know where to begin, to be honest with you. I, I says to my husband the other day, I says, where did I start? How did I even, you know, begin to, t- to tell you all what he's done? It's just amazing. Um, on Sunday when we left here six weeks ago, um, Grace was fine. She was showing no signs of being sick at all. She was just being a normal child. And um, we went out for a picnic that evening, didn't we? Yeah. Went out for a picnic that evening and she was showing no signs at all of being sick. Just, um, brought her home, put her to bed. Twelve o'clock midnight, she was mummy, daddy, mummy, daddy, and she was being sick. And she continued to be sick uh, right through to 4 a.m. and then to stop being sick and then brought her in beside me and just started getting a wee bit too sleepy and then a wee bit too weak on it. But she was still fine. She was drinking away every time she was sick. I gave her a drink and she was fine. And then um, it came seven that morning, half seven that morning, and I said, right, uh, get these other two up with other two kids at home of a three year old and we seven month old Bobby so I said I'm going to get these two up so I got them up and got um, Faith and Bobby their breakfast and Grace she was just in the sitting room sitting on the sofa was just keeping an eye on her throughout um, being in the kitchen feeding the other two and then I just I wasn't you know comfortable anymore with her condition I knew that she was deteriorating in front of my eyes and I knew it wasn't something bad. So I rang my husband and said, what do you think I should do? And I says, I feel that I need to, to maybe ring the doctor or something. So I rang the doctor and I got an appointment for half eleven. And um, I just really kept an eye on Grace. And I put them all in the car and brought them all to, um, dropped Grace, our faith off at nursery. And then um, brought Bobby and Grace onto the doctors. And... Every bump along the road, she was crying, she was in pain, and, and I knew it was sore. And I, all my might that I could get to that doctor's surgery, um, ASAP. And when I got to the doctor's surgery, there were so many there in that surgery, and I was like, hey, I don't know what's going on here, Lord, but I need you to carry me through this. I know this isn't no far thing. I know by her discoloration, her grey lips are fast breathing. I knew that something's not good here. And I was nearly preparing myself what the doctors were going to tell me because I knew, I knew when I went in that, that it wasn't going to be good. And I um, was waiting on the doctor's surgery and I was getting really, really nervous for My appointment was at, at half eleven and I wasn't called at five to twelve. And I was just sitting there or there going, you know, what's going on, what's going on? And when it came five to twelve, everybody was away and I goes, I'm going to have to go here and see what's going on. So I went up to the receptionist. At that time, the two doctors who were my own doctors came out and called, come on ahead on in. So I went on in and sat down and um, the doctor just stirred. He was like, okay, and brought her in. But I could, I could smell the septicemia, the real, like, poison. And I was like, this isn't, isn't going to be good. And I said, I want you to take a look at this rash. So the doctor um, checked her rash. He goes, yeah, I'm going to treat this for what I think this is. And at that time, Grace was really, really struggling to breathe at this stage. And I was just holding her two wee hands, going, Grace, 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 it's okay, Grace. You know, just keeping her alert as I could while they examined her. And the, the immediately, she was going in and out of consciousness like that. And he says, I've got to get something on her. So they got oxygen on her, and immediately they give her antibiotics. Um, I had my, my wee Bobby with me, and I was really panicking for it. I didn't know what to do. I knew that things were going to happen very quickly here. So the doctor um, said to me, right, what we're going to do is I'm going to ring the pays here. And the ambulance came to the uh, surgery. And I left Bobby with the, um, well, obviously before this, I rang my husband and said, listen, you've got to come. And he was like, right, well, I'll go into the house and get changed. And I was like, no, darling, you have to come now, right now. There's no time to get changed. And it was sort of like, oh, sure, you know, she'll be all right. And I was like, no, you, you really must come. So we came as quick as we could to the surgery and collected Bobby, and I was away in the ambulance. To be honest, I can't even remember getting in the ambulance. I don't even know where it was. I just remember getting, you know, being at A&E. And I got there, and uh, such a swarm of people coming in round and, and just just caring for Grace and taking her away and all. And I was like, I just want my wee girl here. I don't, don't leave her. 
you know, and they were like, um, well, is it okay if we do this? I just, just do whatever you need to do. Just, you know, just, let's just save her. And I just, I was just so distraught. I, I didn't know what was going on, to be honest with you. And something really, really weird happened. I don't know if any of you believe in visions. But I can, all I can remember, and I always remember saying to my husband, I can remember looking up and seeing a friend who I was in the army with, and she was in our shell, so, and she goes, is this your child? And I says, yes, it is. I had seen that somewhere before. I really did. And I was like, wait a minute, Lord, what is this? I have seen this somewhere before. Before? I didn't know where at this time where I had seen this from. And then the Lord reminded me, when all calmed down, we were in the mother's room, that he had, um, or the parents' room, that he had shown me this vision before this even happened. Almost like he was preparing me for what was going to happen. And I was like, Lord, that, this is unbelievable that you can do this. So um, they, they were carrying away for Grace, and the next thing Kings arrived, and um, he took Bobby, and we went into the wee parents' room. And the doctors were like, we just don't know what's going to happen here. Can you just get all your family together? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So Kings had done the ringing for me, for I just I didn't know where I was at that stage. And my sister arrived, and um, everybody else was there who wanted to be there. And then I was like, we need a ring, Ken, we need a ring, Ken. And he was like, oh, he's at a funeral. I was like, oh, what can we do now? He said, we just really were praying and praying and praying, and we just didn't know what on earth was going to happen. But for some reason, I, I knew everything, even at that time, that everything was going to be okay. But I don't know how. I don't know how. I, I thought I'm a, half of them I was thinking, you know, I might lose my child through this, you know. I, I just might lose her, and I was trying to come to terms with that. And of course, the old enemy comes in and was flashing coffins in front of my mind. And I says, "I rebuke this all in Jesus' name. There is no way that this is going to happen, my child. This is, this is not of God." I says, "All sickness comes from the enemy. This is not of God. The, the Lord doesn't want this." And um, where am I now? <laughs> just reading from my mind here. Um, then we Grace, she got transferred to the theatre in still in Craig Avon. And the Belfast Royal Peds, they were they had to ring the paediatricians from Belfast, so they were coming down to take over. So um, they came down and they brought her down to the theatre so they could get all their kit on her and, and get her sorted for going up to Belfast. So Ken and I and Alison and um, my mum and Kingsley were there and my sister and I think at one stage Barkley arrived as well. And we're just all really just, you know, stepping into real deep spiritual <coughs> prayer. And something happened in that room that was very, it's very hard for me to describe. It was like, the spirit was definitely there, but I don't know, I had a real heaviness of me, on, on me, and um, I just needed to really speak out to the enemy on it. I was like, Satan... I know this is you, and I need you to take your hands right off my child now. Just right off him or her. You have no right. You have no right to take hold of my child. Just let go of her. And the nurse came in, and she's like, wait, don't go anywhere yet. Grace has took a turn here. And I didn't know at this stage that my child had had a six-month cardiac arrest. And I was like, what had just happened? I had just told the enemy to step off my child and the next thing that her heartbeat went straight back up to normal again and all her alls went back to normal. And I was like, I was, like, I was just so, so shocked. I was like, Lord, you are awesome, awesome God. You are a good, good father. That was only the first thing that he'd done. Um, she had a very comfortable ride up to uh, Craig Avon and they were really worried because she was she was out for so long, the six minutes, they were worried about her brain, in case there was any bleeds in her brain. So as soon as she got to the Royal, she went for a CT scan. And they said that um, it, was, it was clear. So praise God for that, that it was clear. And then um, they got her up to the ward, to PICU, and they got her very comfortable and all. And we were in the parents' room, and then they came in and they called us, and they are like, listen, your child is very, very sick here. Um, she is... a uh, I see RP is Sarah Harrison. You can't see you. She's upstairs. All the do- Any other doctors here? No. <laughs> um, she has a 
CRP level or CPK level of 120,000. And doctors said they'd never seen this before in their life, and they were really, really worried about this. And they obviously were treating her for meningitis, but they didn't know what strain or what it was, or you know how how severe she was. But they knew she was very, very sick. So she was losing an awful lot of blood. She was bleeding from the nose, she was bleeding from the mouth, and all her organs and veins and all were seeping blood and fluid. They weren't holding anything. And at this stage, I didn't really know what they were talking about. I was like, right, okay, I was just looking at my daughter lying here, and there was veins, or there were seven syringe drivers going behind her, there was lines in both legs and her neck and her inner arms. And I was like, what on earth is going on here? Um, I just didn't know where to turn next, apart from to the Lord. And we just completely breathed life over grace and just continued to do that the whole way through the six weeks breathing life over her, breathing the Holy Spirit over her, just trusting the Lord that he was going to heal her. And I, as I put in Facebook there last week, I was holding on to 20%. I only give the Lord 80%. And I was like, I feel as a mother I could do something with that 20%, but I could really do nothing. And I was like, I, I have got to give this over for anything to happen here. So... Um, on Tuesday, uh, the 16th of August, this was the next day, they put a CVVH machine on Grace, which is like a filtration of her blood, which takes all the bad stuff out and puts her blood back in. Um, her heartbeat was previously, in the first day when she went in, was 198, and it went down to 161 about a minute, so she was recovering that way, but she was still very, very much so, very sick. And I just did not know what on earth the doctors were. Every time we went into the doctor's room, they were like, you know, just doom and gloom. And I was like, listen, the Lord's going to do something amazing here. And they're looking at me going, you're not wise. You should be in here. And I was like, no, listen, just you, just you watch. He's going to do something good here. You know, I feel it in myself. And it was just unbelievable. So... On Tuesday, I decided, right, I've gone off to give the Lord this 20% here, for I can't do anything with it. So, at prayer time that night, me and hubby were in the room, and I just completely left the whole lot with the Lord. And I says, right, Lord, I can't do anything else with this. I says, you are a good, good father, and I trust you with my child. If it's your will to take Grace home, that's okay. I says, you give her to me in the end of the day, and it's your will if you want to take her home. But it wasn't his will. And he says that, that he's going to heal her and he's going to restore her and bring her direct to great strength. And he gave us a verse. He says, the verse, John 11, verse 4, that this sickness is not unto death, but it's for the glory of God. May the Son of God may be glorified through us. And I totally believe that through this whole journey that, that she would be that we should be healed and that the Lord would be completely and utterly glorified through this all. They found out that the meningitis was a type W, which is a strain that teenagers get. Now, my wee girls too, and they couldn't understand how a two-year-old girl has got this strain of a meningitis. It just didn't make sense. And just as time went on, they were giving all these fluids and replacing her bloods, taking bloods from her, checking her um, infection levels. They were pumping antibiotics on her. She was three different antibiotics, getting them pumped in there, and she was just lying there. She wasn't able to breathe. She was on a life support machine for the week and a half that she was in PICU. And she just wasn't able to do anything for herself. Her wee heart was just completely, basically destroyed because it was so much inflammation going on with all her wee organs with the septicemia and she was just her wee body was just thumped to bits so they just tried their best to get all the the um, blood poison basically out of her body just so her infection levels could start to come down and her temperature and all could be maintained um, on that Thursday they were able to get a pulse on her feet and because of the septicemia went right through her body, but it stopped here. And I believe that in that time that I took her into the, the um, doctor's surgery, that as soon as they put the antibiotic in her leg, that it was coming here. 
right through her body. But as soon as I got it in, it just stopped it. And I believe that it did not go any further. It came a wee bit down this right leg, but in this left leg, it just came a wee bit below the knee, but it stopped. And they were like, you are lucky that it did not go near their child's feet, because if it did, we'd be in, in deep trouble. But um, they were talking to me in the early days about amputation, and at that stage I was like, yeah, that's fine. I says, take whatever you want, offer to save my child. I says, at that stage, it was life or death. And I just want, you can take her legs if you want. I says, no problem, just save my child. Do whatever you have to do, just save her. And um, as time went on, the Lord was like, no, no, I, I, no, I'm not happy with that. I said, you know, and the enemy was like, no, I want to take every limb off that child. In fact, I want to take her life. Well, many a time there was a way, if you ever walking into the, the PIC, or into the children's hospital, there's like a wee alleyway at the top, and there's all these wee kids' beds. And I'd go up there and I'd give the enemy what for. See, any time that I was on my own and hubby was at home, the enemy attacked me completely and utterly. Oh, it was unbelievable. The amount of people who are, you know, like neurologists and all coming in going, your child's going to be brain damaged, your child's going to be left like a vegetable, not be able to move, not going to be able to do anything. I says, I rebuke that in Jesus' name that he is going to heal her. I am not listening to any of that. I says, yes, you're doing your job, but I am not accepting that. I says, I am declaring absolute healing of my child's body. Um, then we had plastic surgeons coming in yet again. Yes, amputation is going to have to be done here. It was so deep into her skin. It was so close to her muscle that if it was going to be destroyed, there would be no movement in her legs. So they were like, we just take off. I says, you're taking off nothing. I says, I'm not signing for it. I says, the Lord's going to heal her leg. Just you watch it. So I kept taking photographs of her leg, and every time she got the leg dressed, I was taking snaps. And they were looking at me as if to say, what is wrong with this woman here? She's really, be careful, that bay there, your woman's not ways. And I was taking all these photographs of every scratch in her body, because there was that many different people coming in and looking at her, and they were going, um, I don't think that's improving any. And he says it is, and I get the phone out and show them, and go, well, right enough it is, you don't mess with her. And I was like, let's get on with this. And I was like, you know, you're not, you're definitely not uh, taking over here, taking my child to no theatre. I says, just give the Lord time. So, um, on the, what day are we on now? On the Thursday. Um, yes, we were speaking on invitation. On the Sunday, uh, she was coming off sedation. And she was like a weasel. She was sitting pie eyed like this, looking everywhere, and she didn't sleep for about two days after. But I was so glad to see her open her wee eyes. I was like, oh my baby. I was like, hello wee woman. And she just, she just stirred and she said, mummy. Now, us mummies, to hear your child say mummy was just, oh, it was just unbelievable. It was like hearing it for the first time. And she um, started taking seizures then. So she did, and um, they were really getting re- worried about this. So she was down to get another CT scan anyway, just to check the brain. And um, they took her down, and they gave her a CT scan. They brought her back up again, and they noticed there was a wee infarct in the brain. So they wanted to um, just to check into that to see what was going on. So they had a CT scan booked for that Friday, and. Um, just throughout that whole week, they were giving her loads of stuff to try and kickstart her body again. Now she was awake. So they're giving her stuff to uh, kickstart her organs, like her kidneys, her stomach, her gut, or just her whole organs again, because it got such a crashing. Um, then she was able to drink and just giving her a wee drink of water. My goodness, she near guzzled the whole cup. She was just glad to get it. And then she was licking away ice lolly as well. She was just so delighted just to get anything into her mouth apart from an old tube. Um, so on that Friday then, she got uh, more bloods taken. They were getting them previously throughout the whole week, but they were really dropping, starting to drop considerably. So the Lord was really answering our prayers. Just, it was just unbelievable. Day and night we were just walking up and down that corridor, just praying and praising God for every way step that he done. And then um, we were just like, right, we got we got to call out every single organ that she has in her body, every blood cell, every white cell, whatever it is that needs to be healed. We need to call it out in Jesus' name to be healed. So that's exactly what we done. And we were like, as asking her, so what do you call this? And what do you call that? And can you write that down? And, and I was going, what does she need this for? I need to pray about it. <laughs> and I just tell me what it is. 
And um, I says, you do the whatever you need to do, and I'll do the praying, and you watch what head drops. <laughs> so I done that, and uh, just throughout days, we're coming down, and they're, the start of got to the situation where they didn't really want to see me coming in anymore because I was like hounding them right what's wrong now <laughs> so they just sort of like says she's all right she's our bloods is doing fine I was like right okay so they left the bloods was doing that fine they just left it alone and whenever we got down to the ward so it was praise God that they were just reducing themselves so um on the Friday came to the Friday um the CT scan and she went down and they were mind blown by what they seen. So they came up and they called me and Kingsley into the room and they were like, um, we don't know how to tell you this, but we, Grace, has got a bleed to the brain. And we did not know. I was like, what does this mean? They says they just don't know. And I was like, well, is this, can they do something with it? Um, is there, is there going to be another bleed? You know, you just ask so many questions and they just couldn't answer them. So um, we just said, right, well, what, what is the plan? What can we do now? And it says, well, we just want to rule things out. So they sent her down for an MRI scan immediately. And um, they kept her asleep before she was ventilated. So they kept her down, uh, brought her down to get um, the MRI scan. And it definitely showed that it was, um, it was a bleed because if it was infection, any fluid, it would be a dark colour, but it was white, so it was definitely blood. And they said that... They're just really sorry for what they've seen and they just need a monitor. And I was like, well, what what on earth is going to happen here? And they say as well, she could very easily take a stroke or she could she could just pass away just like that. And they just don't know because there was so much pressure on the brain. It was so very swollen up just with the menacoc and the, the meningitis. But Grace was, even before she went away, the doctors were like, we don't understand this how she is so well because she was the doctors were coming over and examining her before she went down for the CT scan and she was like saying all done and you know waving and all this and they were like a child shouldn't be doing this you know if she's got a bleed to the brain that's why they were so shocked they just didn't know what to say when they seen it and um, I says I'll tell you what happened I says the enemy is raging because you are healing away at my child and he's sitting in the back door there wondering Right, what can I do here to, to knock this up here? So he put a wee bleed in her brain. The Lord took away the symptoms. I says, that's exactly what happened. I says, and I, that's definitely what happened. And they're like, she's definitely... Do you want to go for a scan? <laughs> you definitely need one here. <laughs> so she went for the... Or she came back up and I says the, to the wee Scottish nurse, our consultant, I says, what is the next plan here? She says, well, because she is so well... We'll obviously not just ignore it, but we'll just really monitor and see how she goes. So they just let her wake up. And I can tell you, because I was standing up for the Lord, the enemy sent everybody he could in his way to get at me. There was nurses being negative. There was just silly things. And I just had to rebuke them all because the enemy tried to do all he could to turn me down. Especially doing things to my child where he's not even welcome. She was having a bit of drug withdrawal when she come round from the um, being on the ventilator and all and being asleep for the the CT scan and the MRI. So when she wakened up, kidneys started working. They were going flat out. So they were they were just wonderful. And um, they said that you know, she was doing really, really well and they were so shocked at how well she was doing. They just couldn't believe it. I've lost myself. Right. Um, then on that Saturday, this was two days later, Grace took another um, seizure and she was, she was very distressed, very, very distressed. And the doctor said... Um, we're going to have to put her to sleep again. So that Saturday night, I put her to sleep again and brought her down for a CT scan in case the bleed was worse or there was another bleed. But they brought her down and seemed to be okay. There was no other bleed, but through the brain, this bit here was very pushed over at the side. But then with that scan, two days later, it straightened up a wee bit. 
So the pressure, the um, inflammation that went down in the brain, and the fluid was still good. There wasn't too much fluid in the brain. So it wasn't under a whole lot of pressure. So praise God for that, that it was starting to reduce itself. Um, so that night, um, we just said, you know, we just really got to get our friends down here, just to, Ken, just to pray on her. So Ken and Daniel came down that night and just laid hands on her, just praying with her, just completely breathing the Holy Spirit over her. And again, the doctor says, you know, do you live far away? And I was like, um, up no, we're just 25 minutes. And he's like, well, here, I wouldn't be going anywhere. And I says, we'd tell you, she's going to be 100%. I says, she'll be fine. I says, well, let her, you know, sleep there tonight. If you need us, just ring us. We'll come down. We're only down the road. And he says, right, well, just, you know, prepare for a call, basically. So after we prayed over, we went in and, and just went home and um, completely believing that she was going to be fine that night, and she was. She completely was. She was fine. Um, on the Monday, um, they started to reduce reduce the sedation again because she was getting that much. She was been put to sleep and waking up and put to sleep and waking up. She didn't know where she was or what was going on. So they let her come awake, and she was just going from she was just going from strength to strength. So she did. And then the plastic surgeons, they came in again. They were popping in and out, just checking her leg. And I was still saying, yet no, just give it time. It's going to be all right. And um, the plastics came in on the Monday. And they said they weren't going to do anything with the leg because they thought it was all right. And then on the Tuesday, um, one of the consultants wanted to do a scan on the chest and on her leg, just to make sure, because the infection levels started to come up again. So they wanted just to rule things out. So they changed all the lines. And they um, done the scans on the chest to see any secretion on her on her chest because she's having the, the tube down all the time. So there was a wee bit, but there wasn't anything to worry about. Um, so when they done the um, the scan on the leg, they noticed there was a whole lot of fluid on it. So um, as soon as they told me that, I just just completely got into praying with her and just you know just completely trusting that that the Lord would, would sort this out. And then they the had to call the plastic surgeons immediately to, immediately to come up just to drain the fluid out of the leg in case anything had happened. So the time they came up, I was standing there and um, they were looking at the leg. And the consultant was standing here and the doctors were standing here, the plastic surgeons. And I was looking out the window and I was like, right, Lord, come on, this is your time now. Heal this leg and you'll shut the life out of these. And I was like, and I was like, they heard me even pray and they'd say, that in there, who's she talking to? Who's she see out that window? I was like, you know, it's going to be great, it's going to be great, Lord, just do it, just do it. And then I looked over and he goes, oh, it's not your time yet then. <laughs> and I goes, I'll accept it. Um, so whenever uh, we were standing there, the plastic surgeon starts squeezing the leg and looking around the leg. He goes, I don't see anything here. And I was like, ha ha, that's just... <laughs> I felt like saying, if they said to me, you've been praying, praying, who's praying? <laughs> no, not at all. So whenever... Um, he said, the two of them were bickering with each other. We were going, you know, I see nothing. Why'd you call me? It's like, it was there. I'll show you. So they went to the desk. And right enough, he looked through the ultrasound. You could see this mass of, of fluid around the leg. And they started feeling it, and there was nothing there. And she was comfortable enough when you were squeezing it. There was nothing there. And I says, that's the Lord again. Thank you, Lord, for some belief. But he's just confusing the whole professional here, absolutely. And um, on Thursday, she started getting a very high temperature again. And she was vomiting and just being really sick, but we just thought it was the morphine. So after a couple of days, it settled down, so it did. And um, she started really improving. Um, obviously, her, she had no uh, mobility in her legs, and she had a weak side down the right. So they're just keeping an eye on her and seeing if she needed, you know, you know, what is she going to need? Because at that stage, they were telling us that she may not even need, you know, too much physio because all they were doing was the, the patting on the chest to get the secretions up. But they were telling us that, you know, you're going to need to get this child into special school. She's not going to be able to walk. She's not going to be able to talk. She's just going to be sitting in this chair. And he goes, absolutely not. Not my child. Not my child. I says, the Lord's going to heal her. He started it. He's going to finish the job. Definitely, I says, just you wait to see what the Lord's going to do with this wee one. Definitely. 
And I was like, you know, Lord, I am completely and utterly trusting you here. There is not one thing that I know that you can't do. Absolutely nothing. It's nothing to him. I says, Lord, all you have to do is touch her. I says, but um, he definitely was working with her because um, that Saturday, no, that Friday, um, we were in a wee bay in PICU and there was a wee baby here and a baby in the corner and then a wee baby in the middle and we were at this corner. And the girl from the baby in the corner came over to wash her hands and I was over there as well. And she says, here, do you feel something in here? I was like, what do you mean? She says, you know, like a, like a warmth or something, you know, we're Christians. And I was like, why are you? I says, I'm a Christian too. Why are you? I was like, yeah. I, was like, I feel something weird in here. I says, like something's happening. I says, it's amazing, isn't it? She's like, yeah. So we just were praying and she was looking at me and we were winking at me passing the comments over the table. And, and I was like, nay, having a clue what we're doing here. <laughs> and I says, just laugh, they're all right. And we were... Um, Completely, her wee baby was very ill. Um, obviously, I'll not give too much information, but his wee heart was was dropping very quickly and would drop that much that it would be very dangerous. And um, we were just praying for each other's child. And something happened that night on the Friday night because Grace had her very last seizure at 4 a.m. and her child had its last drop of the heartbeat that night as well. And Grace has not had a seizure from that morning. Praise God. Praise God. Something happened. We just don't know what it was, but obviously it was the Holy Spirit and he knows what he was doing. So um, that was another answer to prayer. Um, on the Wednesday, the next Wednesday, um, they were just doing things that they wanted to do because um, she was going to be going to the ward, so they wanted to rule things out because um, she was still had... Um, high level of infection and her blood levels still weren't going down. One was going up and the other one was coming down. Her white cells were going up and her reds were going down. They, just, they were just interacting so we just didn't know what was going on but I says, um, oh, I know exactly what's happening. I says, the Lord's healer, she's just catching up. I says, she just needs to <laughs> chill for a minute and let her body get up with it. But um, they went for an MRI scan of the bleed and the bleed you know, straight down. The bleed had reduced dramatically. But the sort of were hiding the fact to tell me, because I thought I'd just throw a complete wobbler in the middle of the, the aisle, and I was going, yes, I knew you would do it. So they just sort of kept coming, yes, the, the bleed has reduced. Really? Hallelujah. So I just knew that the Lord was going to do something. And he did. So um, we got moved to the ward. And um, obviously when you get moved to the ward, there's a handover. So the, the girls and the nurse got a hand over and they're like, oh my goodness, this child is sick. I'm afraid they're going to get this one in the bay. So they put us right beside the nurse's station. And um, they were really, really scared about her. And we hadn't been in yet that morning. And the nurses were in talking to Grace and she was sitting staring. And as Grace does, she could give you a look that would with you. So my mother-in-law says. And she just would totally stir you out and they were like this child is taking you know, getting the wee light out checking her eyes as she was doing the wee seizure again and I was like no that's just her giving you a look as if they said do not come any closer <laughs> so they just kept an eye on her she's just a wee agent like and they were keeping an eye on her and they were like this child I don't know if she's gonna how she's gonna come out of this so I walked around the corner and this big smile mommy well here your woman didn't know where to look she's like what's going on here I says here, I don't think that's the same woman or the same uh, child that's on these notes out here. So they were just, as the drugs were off, she was getting physio every single day. And I can tell you as a mother, that was hateful. Absolutely hateful. She was in agony. And even her wee legs, yet they're still so, they're so um, like tight and she's just so uncomfortable. But the Lord will finish the job. You know, she's... She's not able to walk or talk at the minute, but I believe that the Lord will restore her back to the child she was before. So would I. I really fully believe it, and I'll not quit believing it. Don't care how long it takes, he can do it. And we were there um, a couple of days, and she started getting really strong. You know, she was starting to sit up herself, and I was videoing this, and I was getting all excited. Look at what she can do. And then her wee sister came up to see her. Now these two are completely and utterly beside by each other. They just love each other and just to see them together again just made my whole day I was just like you know Lord I said to you four weeks ago at this stage I was like 
if you want to take Grace home, that's okay. But at this side, it's like, no, Lord, that definitely wouldn't have been okay. No, no, I don't think that would have been okay. You know, I don't think I could have went through that. And he sort of told me, yes, you could. If you have been through this six weeks, you can absolutely have gone through that. No problem. Well, it's so funny what you think. When you're, when you're in that situation, you think everything's okay, but it's really not. You're just you're fooling yourself. But if you leave it in the Lord's hands, he, can, he just pulls you right through. There's not a thing that, that he cannot do. Absolutely not. So... A few more days went on, she was still getting physio and she wasn't getting bloods anymore then her, um, just gradually as day goes on when she was down up the ward they were taking her um, antibiotics were being finished then so she was getting less antibiotics and um, then they stopped and they were like right can this wee woman eat? And I was like absolutely can she eat, she has an appetite like a horse, so I said she can eat indeed. So they were giving her purees this time because we were worried about her swallow so whenever they, um, the speech and language girl came down she was like um, just looking at her wondering if she could swallow and I was like oh I'll show you and took a wee bottle of juice and she took the whole thing there she's like my goodness this is unbelievable it's unreal the trauma this child's been through and she's not showing us any of it I says I know it's, that's amazing isn't it and she's like this is, I've never seen anything like this before she's getting all excited and I was like Lord speak to her there quick will you <laughs> I says I'm trying but I'm not getting the words out <laughs> and uh, it was just amazing. She was just so astounded by what was what she was seeing in front of her eyes. And whenever um, she was looking at her and examining her, yes, no problem, we can give her potatoes and beans. Well, the next day, dinner time, the speech and language girl came down and she ate all around her. Swallowed, no problem. Not a bother to her. And from then on, she went from strength to strength eating her dinners. And then she started one day, she decided that she would only let daddy feed her. Mummy wasn't allowed to feed her. No nurse, no doctor, nobody in the ward was able to feed Grace but her daddy. So daddy had to come down and she basically starved all day and my daddy came down to the party. So that's what happened. So mummy was pushed out, so that was just it. But she's daddy's girl anyway. Definitely is. It was only mummy girl for a while, but just back to daddy's girl. And um, she... Uh, was able to stand up on her wee legs but only to wait for for so many seconds and then it got very uncomfortable for her so the nurse just thought she would leave it or the physio even so she's just able to do like wee things like a baby again like rolling you know or just you know she can't hold her back up at the minute but she'll get there so she will and her wee speech is getting you know gradually each day um, like yesterday she learnt the new word dodo she can say dodo again and like she was so fluent, you know, before, but it'll come back, you know. It'll, I really believe it'll, yes. it'll definitely come back. So what will? So the surgeons, the plastic surgeons, they came down and they were like, right, <laughs> they were sort of saying to me, is it okay? Can we take your daughter now for her operation? And I was like, yes, absolutely, on you go. So the next day we got her prepped and got her down for her operation, got her wee graft done. That's all she needed. No amputation here. Graft her wee leg and took her down and done the job and then we brought her back up again and um, she just you'd think nothing had happened to her she was just lying there just taking it all in and the doctors came up on the Tuesday no the, the plastic surgeon said he'd come up on the Tuesday to check her leg and he goes um, he was in India and he says well okay you go home I said go home you're mad I says I can't take her home sure I haven't even a room painted <laughs> I says you have me a day or two but he says eh uh, Whenever she got sick, by the way, because it was bacterial, I stripped my house. I got a new suite. I had to get new carpet and everything. I wasn't taking any chances. So anyway, we got that done, and uh, he came up in the, the plastic surgeon came up on the Tuesday, checked her legs, said it was perfect. It was just healing so well, and glory to God to that as well. Absolutely amazing what he was doing. You know, was when you look at the wee leg, you wouldn't even think hardly. Only for a couple of wee grazes, you wouldn't even think it was as bad as it was. I do have a lot of photographs, but I'm just mentally not ready to show anybody just yet. But I will through time. Like I had about an hour to get this ready for the night, so I probably missed out the whole thing. I'm sorry, Lord, you will just prep me next time. But <laughs> just I've, I know I have missed out a lot. But um, on the first Saturday that Grace was there, the doctor from A and E who had seen her, Doctor Quinn, um. He was like, oh my goodness, Grace is still here. I'll have to go and see her. 
But when he came up to pay ICU, he seen her and he was like, Oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. I can't believe she's sitting looking so well. She was still on the ventilator. But where there's life, there's hope. And she was, she was just laying there, just recovering, basically. And um, it's, it's just been amazing what she's been doing, so, or how she's been recovering. And all the doctors and nurses were like, I just can't believe what she has been through. Reading her notes here, she is just a miracle. You know, and I was like, you know, all glory to the Lord. He told me he would heal her. He told me he would pull her through. He gave me the word, and I just completely and utterly trusted him and lay on it. And just, if they told me anything, I just says, but God. God can do this. He has completely got this. It's nothing to him. You know, and they were like, um, we're worried about this. And I was like, right, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll do the praying. I'll leave it at the foot of the cross, and he'll deal with it. So that's just what we done. I never listened to any or looked at any of the monitors or anything. I just completely trusted him. And I said to the nurses that, you know, these are all his tools. These are, every single one of you are just his tools, doing his job. And just you watch this wee miracle perform because it's just amazing. So um, they were happy enough for her to be transferred to Craig Avon. And they wanted her to go there just so they could monitor her and get to know her and stuff before she goes home. I wasn't in through the door half an hour. The doctor came in and says, you've no need to be here. You can go home. And I says, happy days. I'm away. <laughs> so <laughs> I rung um, mother-in-law. She came back and she got us together and home. And then poor Kreta had no curtains on her wall. But sure, she was glad to be home. And she just... She's just went from strength to strength from just being home, haven't you, Pat? And she's just a wee darling, and I can't explain how happy I am to have her. It's just unbelievable. As a mother, I'm still standing in shock that this has actually all happened because it's all just happened so quickly. You just don't know, so you don't. But if you just trust him, there's absolutely nothing that he can't do. Not a thing. And... It happened, this happened in a time in my life when I was really starting to doubt my faith. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I was like, Lord, there's so much happening around me, my friends and my family. There's things failing. But where are you, God? What are you doing? Are you not going to do something? And whenever it all happened with my child, he was like, I am here and I am listening. But it's not my time for these things to be done. But it's time for this to be done. And I'm just showing you how strong I am. And I thank the Lord for, let, for picking me to go through this journey with him. Because I can tell you it's brought me closer to him. And he is real. He is very real. So real. And his strength is amazing. And if there's anything that you're holding on to, if there's anything that you're doubting, just you leave it with him. And I can guarantee you in his time and he will finish the job. He definitely will if you just leave it with him. And you needn't just give him 80% or 90 you got to give the whole thing to him. Because he can't do anything with it. I thought he could with 90% or 80%, but he was like, you're having me on here. He, he couldn't. Yeah, but um, I think that'll do me, but I just want to finish with a wee prayer just before we go. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart, Lord, just, yes. for, just for choosing us as a family, Lord, to share this journey with you. You are a good, good father, Lord. Amen. You have witnessed to so many in that world. Praise Lord. the Lord. There was times when I was feeling weak, Lord. The enemy was attacking me, Lord, but I had to go out and rebuke him in your name. Yes, Lord Jesus. And Heavenly Father, I can't explain to people, Lord, how good you have been through here, how close and how real I have felt that Amen. you are. Yes. Your power is amazing that you've made Bless power him. stand in the back of my neck. Bless him, Lord. The things that you have done, the power I have seen, the hearts that you have touched, the friends and my family, my church family, have been so nice and so comforting, Lord. I can't thank them enough. I just thank you, Lord, for blessing us, Lord, in such a beautiful, wonderful place. Bless I just hope, Lord, that when I speak of this over, that you're going to receive every bit of glory. Amen. Lord, souls will be saved and revival <clears throat> will happen, Lord, because you are totally awesome, Lord, and you are ready to receive. And I just thank you again, Lord, for all that you have done. Just praise your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Bless God. Maybe you're struggling with your faith. Maybe you don't have any. 
Maybe you're not saved. This is the reality of God. We just don't come on a Sunday to say we're clocking in and we're clocking out. Christ is risen. He is alive and he's real. And I'll never forget seeing Grace that we left the, the funeral and went straight over to the hospital and I went in with Kingsley. I'll never forget that picture. It's etched in my mind of that child. And I'll never forget us in that room praying and that prayer that it's a prayer of a mother's heart. Something <coughs> happened and her mommy cried out and rebuked the devil. And we had no idea what had happened at this time. And that's when her heart had stopped for six minutes. And uh, we were all praying, but it was whatever way Rachel prayed. And I said after it, I said, oh, something's happened here. And I mentioned it to Rachel and really... The Lord led it on our heart to really seek him through this. And maybe you're, you're here and you're saying, you know, I've heard a testimony and, you know, we haven't had big expounding of the word. doesn't need it tonight. You've seen God at work. You know, the doctor said, look, you could get called any time here. And yet when the doctor's done, and we really appreciate all what the doctors can do and what they have done, and we really do appreciate that. Appreciate that. But when the doctors and the nurses and the medical staff says there's nothing else we can do, and then like, it's like Rachel's 20%. When you hand it right into God, he says, well, I'll do it now. And the, more, the more we have of our own hand in it, the less there is of God's in it. And maybe you're in a position tonight where you sort of realize that what is happening in my life, I feel it's out of control. Well, if you know Christ, if you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, then it's not out of control. It's out of your control. It's not out of his control. Because then when it's out of your hands and my hands, it's always in his hands. So we need to leave things with God. And you know, it's just wonderful. I, I can't, I'm not even her parent. I'm just her pastor. But I can't tell you the joy from seeing this wee one from where she was to where she is now. And the wee squeaks you heard at the start, so it was great the whole way through it. The wee shouts at the start was, was her. And you know what? I was just delighted to hear it. I was just so delighted to hear it. And I got a babysitting job there. I had Bobby. So he's, have you seen me bent over? I wasn't sleeping. I was rocking Bobby. Just to... And I'm just glad to do it. The Lord bless you.